I don't know about you, but earlier on in my career as a documentary cinematographer, I was never really sure how to film cinematic car scenes. I mean, I'd seen Hollywood setups with tow trucks and crazy speed rail rigs, but that didn't really translate into what I was experiencing while shooting documentaries with small teams. But over the years, I've picked up a ton of tips, techniques, and gear hacks from high-end industry DPs who showed me how to get great results using a variety of different camera types, all the way from GoPros up to full cinema rigs. And luckily, if you know what you're doing, getting high-end results is very achievable, even if you're just a solo operator. Because even if you don't shoot scenes like this every day, knowing exactly what to do when your story calls for something out of the ordinary is what separates average cinematographers from great ones. And just one quick thing to mention before we dive right into it, this video is actually lifted directly from my documentary cinematography course, which is open for about another week or so before the doors shut again for six months. So if you love getting deep into this kind of thing, then I made this course for you. This video is just one of another 15 brand new long form lessons that I added for the second intake of this course, bringing the total to over 75 videos with more than 12 hours of in-depth cinematography talk. Most of these new videos are hands-on practical ones just like this because that's what the first cohort said they wanted and so I listened. It's not just about car rigs though because we go into all aspects of the job from advanced lighting tutorials to gear choices to professional development to more specialized shooting scenarios like this one. Honestly, I don't think there's anything else quite like it out there for people who are looking to take their documentary cinematography seriously this year and I'm really proud of how it's turned out. So enjoy this free lesson from the course and hopefully I'll see some of you in the members group soon. This video is all about cars. More specifically, we're gonna be talking about how to shoot exteriors of cars while they're actually driving. Now, you might be asking yourself why I picked one of the windiest and coldest days of the year so far in Toronto to film this video, and that would be a valid question. And the answer is because if I'm gonna recommend any techniques or products out there, I wanna make sure they actually work. So it's my camera out there on the hood instead of yours. For now, let's start rigging. So if you're thinking about filming the outsides of cars or car exteriors, the first thing that might come to mind is a GoPro. And I have a love-hate relationship with GoPros, but uh, sometimes they are the only and best camera for the job. Now, when it comes to GoPros, there's a few basic things that I think are more or less mandatory if you wanna make these things look decent. So just very quickly before I start framing up, I'm gonna go into my basic GoPro settings and I'm going to shoot 4K. That part isn't necessarily connected to the image quality, but I wanna give myself options to crop in later in post. So I'll shoot 4K for this video. But the things that are really gonna make a difference are your lens choices. I like to use linear lenses at the widest. Sometimes I'll even do the narrow, even though that's just a digital punch in. I hate that fishbowl effect that GoPros look, and I think it's sort of, cheapens the overall look of your project. So after that, I want to make sure the bit rate is turned to high. The white balance is proper. So we're shooting outside, so we'll do 15, 5,500. I want to turn the sharpness to low because it's a lot easier to add sharpness in post than it is to try and make a GoPro file look unsharp. And then I want to change the colors away from GoPro colors to flat. Um, it's not like a true log file or anything. I heard the, the very new GoPros are a little bit better at this, but um, it just makes it a little bit easier to grade and gives you a bit more latitude to match it to your other footage because that's really the challenge. You want it to look the same as your other footage. Um, hyper smooth and all that we won't get into. Generally turn on whatever kind of stabilization you have for a car and remove those micro jitters. Now you might have noticed that I skipped over one setting which I think is maybe the most important one if it's if your goal is to make GoPro footage look more, you know, air quote, cinematic, and that's the shutter. So with GoPros, if you leave the shutter on auto, it's gonna internally increase the shutter to compensate for all the light coming in because usually they're shooting outside. And that's gonna make your footage look really sort of unnaturally sharp, sort of like the difference between a soap opera and a movie. I personally don't like that look. Maybe you're going for it. I hate it. Uh, so the best way to make GoPro footage look a little better and match everything else that's coming out of my FX3 and my FX9 is to use a manual shutter speed. So I want to make sure that my shutter is at 1 over 48th, which should give it a much better look when used with a 24 frames a second frame rate. Just like you'd set with a camera, 24, you double the, you double the shutter speed, you get 48 that should be a big difference. And that's all well and good, 
But the issue then is that your GoPro is most likely gonna be very exposed because you've basically taken away all of its auto exposure tools. And that means that the only way to make this work is with additional accessories. You need filters. So basically to get these off, if you didn't know, you can twist the, the front filter and then it comes off and you get this sort of little naked GoPro. And then using third-party ND filters. So today we're lucky that it is not very bright. If you're shooting in a really sunny location, then you need a lot of ND. You know, even ND8 might do it. Before I screw this thing on, I'm just gonna hold it up. I mean, that's looking pretty good. We've already gone from completely blown highlights to it looking pretty good. So I still say, use them as a last resort. I don't like the way they look, but it makes me hate them just a touch less. The next step, I'm gonna get outside and try and find my frame, and then we'll get the mounting hardware out. Okay, we're going full hood on now. It is way below freezing right now. It is really chilly, even if it doesn't look like it on camera. So I've got cleaning stuff and mounting hardware here. Uh, but the first thing I would do is probably just look through the camera's viewfinder. So a shot I love in a perspective you don't see that much is looking back at the driver from the front hood. I kind of like to do a shot where you can see the driver plus a bit of the city off to the side. I think it's kind of like a cool look at their emotional side. It can read as really reflective while also showing you where your story is taking place. And like I said, there are no rules. If you want to look at look from over here, if you want to show a two shot of two characters at the same time, you can do that as well. Um, but for the sake of this, we're just gonna do this one shot because it's something I've done a few times before and I've always liked the way it looks. Now there's a couple problems we're gonna have to deal with technically speaking. Uh, the main one is probably reflection off the windscreen, but I think we'll save the tutorial for how to sort of deal with that for when we get into mounting the bigger camera system. So for right now, I'm just gonna clean off a section of the dashboard because we're gonna use a suction cup mount. Um, and so whenever you're working with a suction system, you wanna make sure you're putting it on like a really clean surface, otherwise it's just gonna compromise the seal. So I'm gonna use these wet wipes and this uh, cloth to clean off the area, and then we'll get the suction cup mount out and frame it up. One thing GoPro does really well is they've got lots of ways to mount these things. Uh, I won't go through them all, you already know what they are. Uh, I actually have this weird little suction cup to pin to tripod to GoPro mount thing that I've had for years and years and years now that works really well. GoPro makes their own suction cup as well, uh, but I'm gonna use this one. Now the nice thing about this is that you can really you know, dial in the exact positioning. The GoPro one is a little bit more limited in its functionality, but um, it does work. If you do go with the magic arm system like this, uh, it's generally a better idea to keep it sort of, to keep the arm sort of a little tighter rather than fully extending it. It just reduces the vibrations, but I would go for either. But if you have the option, keeping things a little more compact reduces the micro jitters even more. All right, so that's kind of a neat angle. We're doing this relatively quickly just for demonstration purposes, but I mean, I think that's an unusual perspective that you don't see that often. And for a sort of reflective driving scene to put into your story, uh, this could play really well. So now I'm gonna roll this camera and then I'm gonna get in the car and drive around a little bit and we can see what it looks like. And then I'll compare it with what it looks like without the ND filter so you can see for yourself if you think it makes a big enough difference. I personally think it does, but you can decide for yourself. So we'll roll this and then go for a little tour around the block.
So we're driving now on the weekend when traffic is light and we're in an out of the way sort of part of the city. But one thing that if you're doing this for yourself, you should always put a safety leash um, connecting the camera to the car just in case your suction seal breaks. I didn't do that this time because of this situation, but when we get the bigger camera out, you're gonna see that I put a lot of emphasis into securing it properly. So make sure it's not gonna fall off into traffic on the highway and cause a bunch of problems. Okay, so I'm just gonna pop that out and have a look at the footage and see what we got. Okay, so I'm just looking at the footage and the angle is okay. You know, it's fine. We could tinker with it and make it better, but uh, it is a cool perspective. And I'm really liking the way the motion blur looks a lot more organic than when you let the shutter uh, do its own thing on auto. But the first thing I notice is that it's actually really hard to see me, uh, the character in this story. And so the way you get around that is by using a polarizer. Polarizers reduce reflections in all sorts of things from glass to water. Um, and so luckily I also carry around uh, these Freewell ND plus polarizers. I like to carry both ND with and without polarization because when you're shooting into glass, it's nice to have a polarizer. But if I wanted to do a POV perspective from a car or something where there wasn't a reflection, it can sometimes make the colors look a little wonky and oversaturated. Um, so it's good to have both options. But in this case, we definitely need it. So I'm going to swap out the straight ND for the ND with polarization, and then we'll put it back on the mount and do another lap so you can see how that changes things. So I'll try and get more or less the same frame. And now if I just turn the polarizer, you can see that I can almost kind of pick where the reflections fall. So I'm gonna create a nice clear field of view right through to the driver where I'll be sitting and then we'll roll this again. Oh, the beat. <laughs> see that old mount still works. I've had that thing since I want to say 2017 and it's still going strong. So buy nice or buy twice. Okay, so we're back. I'm just going to grab the GoPro back and see if that made the difference that I think and hope it will. Yeah, so right away, night and day difference. Um, I can see my face clearly through the windscreen and there's some reflection still there. I'm still keeping that nice uh, motion background blur, that organic feeling from the ND, but we can see through the glass. So definitely if you're planning to do a shot like this, looking back, make sure that you have a polarization option or the reflections are moody. They are like a cool feeling, but if the idea is to see your character, especially if there's some sort of dialogue or if you just need to see their face, then a polarizer is sort of non-optional. So now we're just going to do a quick control test just to compare the footage um, to GoPro set to auto. So I'm not going to put all the settings back to the sort of default GoPro settings, but I am going to put the shutter back on auto and I'm going to turn the sharpness back on and I'm gonna change the color from flat to GoPro. Um, and it should make a pretty noticeable difference in the footage, especially after we grade our uh, 24 frames a second footage that's shot on flat. So I'll put this on, we'll do one more lap, and then we'll see how they all look side by side. So I just pulled the mounting. That's the last of the GoPro for today. Let me just have a look. To me anyways, you can call me a cinematography snob, but to me, there's a world of difference. This whole background just does not feel organic. It just looks overly crunchy, and to me, it looks like a GoPro. You can make up your own mind. Maybe you think it doesn't matter, 
but I care. You can do obviously a lot more things than this. Like you can find a better angle. You could get different kinds of GoPro mounts and hang them underneath the car. That's one thing that's really cool about GoPros is you can kind of put them in harm's way a little more. I'm not gonna spend too much time on that because that's a whole video in itself. But now I wanna show you what you can do to get a bigger, more sort of professional camera on the front if you wanted to take this uh, even a level higher in terms of quality. So instead of using a GoPro, we're gonna get a Sony A7 on the front of the car and see what that looks like. So it just started snowing right in time for us to do our biggest setup because GoPros are fine, they're all well and good, but really we wanna try and use nicer cameras if we can. This is all about elevating the visuals to what we can realistically do in a documentary environment. So the goal is gonna try and be to use this A7 III with this Laowa uh, Ranger full frame cine lens. These are really cool new lenses that I've just started to play with and they're very quickly becoming my favorite full frame oriented cinema zoom. The only con of this thing is that it's very long and heavy. So you need a pretty burly system to make a rig like this work. Luckily I have one. So this is the eye footage spider crab system. <clears throat> I wouldn't say that this is the burliest uh, car mount system you can get. You know, there's huge rigs made by companies like Matthews and stuff, but this is really well made and it all fits into one case. From my point of view as a documentary specialist, this is sort of the most attainable but very professional car mount system that you can get. This is much cheaper than a lot of options out there, but the build quality is still insane. And this system can hold up to like 66 pounds, somewhere around there of weight. So you could put anything up to like a full on Alexa cinema rig on the front of a car if you wanted using this. So for me, this is probably about as premium as I would get for a system like this, because at the end of the day, they are kind of niche shots. I'm not doing them all the time, but it is nice to be able to do them well when you do have to do them. So I'm just gonna build up this rig quickly, then I'll get it situated on the front of the car, and then we can see what it looks like. So even though this is like a, a budget option compared to some of the things out there, this thing is built really, really well. I mean, these arms and these locking rosettes, like it's really heavy duty and premium feeling. And so I think this kit is actually multi-useful because these arms and the suction cups on their own are gonna be super handy for mounting all sorts of things. So the arms and the cups don't have to be attached to the center column. Um, so I think I'm gonna be able to find all sorts of uses for this outside of just uh, mounting to cars. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so when you're done with it, <coughs> you're left with this kind of thing. I mean, you can definitely see why they decided to name it the spider crab. It's a pretty perfect nickname. So yeah, we're gonna bring this thing around to the front of the car and find some good angles and then get it suctioned on and then mount the camera. Okay, so just like last time, we wanna make sure we're working with a, a clean, relatively dry area. Some moisture isn't bad because it can actually help the seal, but you don't want it soaking wet. So I'm just sort of wiping down where I'm gonna put it and then we'll get our suction cups planted. Yeah, that's gonna be about right. Okay, I'm gonna lock these, give it a bit of rigidity. Yeah, that's really on there. So, now we can use the bowl head. This uh, tripod head doesn't come with the kit, you, but you can also use any tripod head you you have. I happen to have this one. Uh, it's made by iFootage. It's great. Um, but you can use any ball head that you want as long as it has a 3 8 thread on the bottom. So we've got it level. Now I'll throw the camera on here, find the frame, and we'll start driving around. So we're going to use a Sony A7. Uh, A7 III. I might normally use my FX3, but we're filming on it right now. So can't complain about this one though. So we've got the Ranger lens on, which is really heavy, but this can definitely handle that weight. Just make sure whatever system you're using that you're working within the rec recommended weight capacity, because you do not want this falling off. That would ruin your day very quickly. 
So just like last time, I'm gonna find the frame. I've got a polarizing filter on the front of the lens so we can actually see our driver. Okay, I'm gonna start with a wide shot and then we'll try something a little tighter. Now, obviously when you can start using uh, mirrorless cameras and zoom lenses or prime lenses, the quality is just gonna go way up. I'm gonna try for a similar shot to last time um, just to keep it consistent. But as you can see, you could easily put this anywhere. Like you could get a wide angle lens on the roof doing some really cool perspectives. We could put it on the doors looking in the window. We could put it on the doors looking down and low. Like this can go on any of the car's panels. And because of the way that the legs are all designed to move in independently, it can really grab on to a bunch of weird places in a way that most uh, car mounts can't. So super cool. Okay, so with the iFootage system, we're lucky enough that the kit includes a dedicated um, leash cup, I guess you could call it, which is just an extra one of the large heavy duty cups with a loop on it. So I'm gonna attach this string and carabiner system um, from this extra cup to the rig itself so that if one of these lets go and it falls, this will catch it and stop it from falling and smashing everything and you can do an emergency stop and fix things. If you don't have a fancy uh, cup system like this, that's okay. You can make a safety rig in a lot of different ways. Just make sure you do one. Like if I didn't have this, I would tie a, a rope or a piece of paracord probably around uh, a thick part of this rig and then run it to possibly a rear view mirror, shut it in the door, um, get inventive, but make sure that you have some sort of safety. I'll pull it tight, but not too tight. And yeah, if one of these cups were to let go, which I don't think they will, but if it were to, this would only fall six inches and we'd be able to stop and grab the whole rig. It might scratch the paint, but you're not gonna lose, you know, thousands of dollars worth of camera gear. So I'll just tidy up the extra cable and then we'll go for a little drive and see how it holds up. Okay, let's do this. So this looks kind of hilarious actually. <laughs> So yeah, this is essentially the same shot that we did on the GoPro, just on a much higher technical level. So hopefully the footage looks a little bit better. And since we're shooting in 4K, I can already see it bouncing around a lot. So this definitely wasn't the best lens choice. I think we're gonna have a look at this footage when we get back and realize that it's a little, little jittery and uh, I'll probably wanna switch out the super long Ranger zoom for something like a 50 millimeter prime or a 24 mil prime, or maybe a 16 to 35, something a little lighter and more compact. All right, so let's have a look at the footage. I'm pretty sure it's too jittery, but uh, it was a fun test to see if something this big could be used and it can look great. Yeah, looking back at the footage, there's obviously a significant, you know, technical leap from using the GoPro. Um, it looks really good to me. I would say that, yeah, using a lens this long um, is not the best choice. We're gonna switch it up and I'm gonna put on something a lot more compact and that's going to level out some of these jitters here. But I don't even hate the look of the jitters. It kind of, to me, feels um, a little more gritty and immersive, but it depends on what you're, you're, you're going for, obviously. The other thing is when using polarizers, one of the reason that I prefer not to use polarizers if possible is that there's a pretty significant color shift. Now, I'm not too worried. This is mostly just a magenta shift and we're gonna be able to take it out pretty easily in post, but to be able to see through the glass does come at a little bit of a cost and it's a, a color shift. So let's change up the lenses and try something a little bit tighter because on a GoPro, 
everything is super wide and one of the advantages of using a camera like this on a sturdy mount is that you can use different lenses. So I'm going to put a 50 millimeter prime on and try and get uh, a slightly more unusual angle and see how that goes. Okay, so we've switched out the Ranger zoom with a Sigma 50 millimeter lens. Um, and I think that's gonna work a little bit better. Plus it's also gonna be a tighter perspective, which is just gonna be very un GoPro, which is something I like, you know, it's just gonna be a little bit more cinematic. Sorry to use the word. So we've got the 50 on there. Let's go for another drive and see how that looks. Okay, so right away that looked a lot less jittery. So I'm just gonna grab the camera, take a look at how it looked, and then we'll think about a second angle. Yeah, I mean, that looks really cool to me. That is uh, a look that you don't often see um, outside of sort of movie budgets. And there's some jitters and you're gonna have to do a little bit of work in post to stabilize it. But the perspective and the focal range and the locked off movement, it all just looks really interesting. So if you're doing a story where there is a lot of driving involved and you really wanna take it to the next level, I mean, this is gonna make your footage look different from most other things out there. The shorter lens was definitely the way to go though. So if you have a choice, try and pick something a little more compact and probably the lighter, the better. Um, so I'm gonna do one more test before we go. I don't want this video to be by any means an exhaustive list of all the different angles you can choose to shoot on a car because it's kind of unlimited. Um, but I wanna try one more thing, which is to put this whole rig on the roof of the car pointing forward so we get kind of a forward POV of driving. I could see this being really neat um, for showing the environment that your characters are pulling into, like a dark country road or um, a gritty urban landscape. You know, I, I could think of a lot of ways to use this shot. So I'm gonna use probably a 16 to 35, maybe I'll try a 24 mil prime, but I think the 16 to 35 just because of the internal stabilization and we'll see if we can make it happen. So the first thing is to pull the safety leash, obviously, and then it should be as easy as popping all three of these seals and it comes off. I mean, it's kind of crazy that something so solid can come off so easily, but very cool. So now for this shot, we're gonna try and get it dead centered right in the middle of the car. And uh, don't judge me, the roof of my car has not been washed in quite some time. So I'm gonna switch off the 50 prime. I think I'm gonna go with the uh, 16 to 35 just because there's built-in stabilization and I wanna see what kind of a difference that makes. Um, and the nice thing about now shooting away from the front of the car is that we don't have to use uh, polarizers because we're not looking through the glass. So we can just hopefully get a little bit better image quality than we were or not better image quality, but less need for color correction in post because of the color shift. So we'll get this up there and then do one final loop. And uh, hopefully this is an interesting angle. All right, so we're going, we've got the camera mounted on the top of the car. We're definitely attracting a bunch of stares from <laughs> people on the street for good reason. Yeah, just another cool angle to try. Again, this isn't about, you know, the best camera angles from the outside of a car because that's really up to you and what works for your story. But it's just one more tool that you can think about for specific situations that could really add to the visuals of a project. So yeah, keep it in mind. That is a, a unique angle and a unique perspective. I could see doing a project about, you know, farmers or game rangers or anyone who's doing a lot of driving and this being like a really unusual and sort of action-oriented perspective. So yeah, 
really, really cool. So we're gonna call it there though, because it is snowing and we're driving around on potholed roads in a big city. So I think you get the idea. The only limiting factor really is your imagination. Now the budget friendly option is something like GoPros and suction cup mounts. And if you get the settings right and you have uh, the right filters so that you can use a good frame rate, then there's nothing wrong with GoPros. And then if you wanna try and boost the production from there and use something like a mirrorless camera or really even an FX9, it could easily hold the weight, then something like the Spider Crab is your best option. And then there's even more elaborate and expensive options after that. But for the purposes of a documentary cinematography course, we're gonna say that that's about top of the line. So I hope that video was useful and it gave you some ideas on how you can shoot with vehicles in different ways and bring your storytelling and cinematography to the next level.